morning and welcome to EOT Yoga, live yoga on your chair. This is my grandma's chair. So my Nina's chair. We didn't call her grandma, we called her Nina. So I'm going to do yoga today on Nina's chair and somewhere here in the background is Nina. I think she's up there. You can't see, quite see her. She's out of the picture. But I thought we'd do chair yoga on Nina's chair in front of the photograph of all the family. I hope you're all well. Um, just take a few moments. You've got three minutes to find your comfortable spot. The spot where you're going to be most comfortable doing chair yoga. I moved into the lounge today because although the sun's out and it's dry, it's a little bit too chilly for me to do yoga in the garden. I get too cold. So, um, I decided to move into the lounge. And to be honest, because I couldn't be bothered to hoover the kitchen floor from all the um, dog hair. Hello, who's joined us? Hi Claire, hi Mummy. Barbara Pierce is watching, hello Barbara Pierce. Hi Claire's watching, um, who else is watching? Oh, Linda Granger, hello Linda Granger, how are you? Um, yeah, so, I'm gonna come back like this for my thighs so we've got to make sure that you, I put my chair Nina's chair on my yoga mat so it doesn't slide and move if you're on a carpeted floor you're fine but if you're on a sliding floor you have to be really really careful so put a mat underneath it either a yoga mat or even your doormat but, but put something underneath it so it doesn't slide or move your chair to a rug um, I've got Sonny digging up cushions on the sofa because he's a pickle. Hello, welcome, hope you're well. Um, yeah, so we're going to do it at chair and we've got one minute. So it's always good to find a comfortable seat. I think this chair might be a little bit too creaky for yoga, but you never know, do you? You never know. I hope you can hear me and see me. So if you can give me a wave, not a virtual wave because I can't see you, but just a wave so that I know that you can um, hear me. Um, well, I hope it's all working well. You never know, do you? It's always fun when you do these kinds of things because you never know what's gonna happen. Sadly, I haven't got my sister and my friends doing chair yoga with me. Uh, I think the last time we did chair yoga, they, um, they were my little helpers. I'm afraid you've only got me today. Hello, welcome. Welcome to all the new people who are joining us. So find your comfortable seat on your chair. Make sure your bottom is about a hand's distance away from the back of the chair. Rest your hands on your knees with your palms facing up, fingers lightly closed. And you can have your eyes in soft focus or in um, or gently closed, whatever you prefer. And we're just going to take a few moments to connect with our breath. Now during yoga, you breathe in and out through your nose. If you can do that, fabulous. If it's tricky for you, then don't worry about it. Make sure that your knees are level with your hips. So you might want to put a block or a book underneath your feet to keep your feet up off the floor so your knees are level and not sloping down. So let's start to connect with our breath. We're going to start to breathe in and breathe out. As you breathe in, fill your tummy rise. And as you breathe out, your tummy falls. Breathing in, feel the tummy rise away from the belly button. And as you breathe out, the belly button is drawn back towards the spine. Breathing in, belly rises. Breathing out, tummy is drawn back towards the spine. Breathing in, tummy rises, ribs expand. Exhale, the ribs go back towards the spine and the tummy button is drawn away and away to the back of the chair. Breathing in, tummy rises, ribs expand, and finally a little lift of the collarbones. And as you exhale, the collarbones sink, the ribs go back to the spine, and the belly button is drawn to the back of the chair. Breathing in, tummy rises, ribs expand, collarbones lift, exhale, collarbones sink, the ribs go back towards the spine and the belly button is drawn back towards the chair. Just in time with your own breath. 
Feeling your lungs expand front, back and sides as you inhale and as you exhale. Take that moment. During a yoga class, it's your yoga class. Do what feels right for you. It's your time. If you feel any sharp pain, just stop what you're doing and sit quietly and imagine yourself doing the pose even if you are not able to do it today. Try to breathe in and out through your nose. Listen to your body. Work with alignment. Make sure that your hips, shoulders and ears are in alignment when you're sitting down and your knees are over your ankles. And your knees are hip distance apart and your feet are hip distance apart. Yoga is not competitive. You don't even compete with yourself from the last time you did yoga. And yoga is a union of mind, body and heart. Keep that connection with your breath as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Nice, gentle breathing. The sound of your breath should sound like a gentle wave on the ocean. As you inhale and as you exhale. Excellent. And then start to become aware of your breath again. Aware of your breathing and start to deepen your breathing in and out through your nose. And then a nice big stretch with your arms above your head. I always have a nice little yawn waiting for you. Oh, you can't see my fingers but I can. Oh my goodness me. And then bring your hands back down to your knees. Stretch your arms wide and then bring them across the body so you give yourself a nice big hug. Relax the shoulders and knees. And stretch them wide again and give yourself a nice big hug the other way. Gorgeous. It's always nice to have a hug, have a hug, have a hug, have a hug because it could be the only hug you get. Even if you get it for yourself, it's still a good hug. Okay, so wriggling your fingers and wriggling your toes. A really soft turn of the head from side to side. Excellent. And then we're going to work on finding our seat. So make sure that your seated bone is um, uh, in contact with the chair. So we're not sticking our butt out. We're tucking our tailbone down. From the side, your hips, hips, Shoulders and ears should be in alignment. Roll your shoulders back a few times and put them in your back pockets. Beautiful. So we just start to do circles because we want to find and make sure that our seat is against, uh, our pubic bones are about against the seat. And this is quite an easy way to do it just by moving around in your chair. And back the other way. Now you can do this whatever chair you're in, whatever time of the day it is. So if you're feeling a little bit stuck, it's a nice way to um, get moving without actually moving out of your chair. Hey, you can do this at your desk. You can do this while you're on a Skype conference call. No one's gonna know. Oh, they might on Skype. But if you're on one that they can't see you, and you just have to listen and speak. You can do the whole yoga class while you're being paid to work. Not that I, well, yeah, anyway. <laughs> do whatever suits you. Okay, so sit up nice and tall and realign. And now we're gonna use a movement of the spine as we go around. So as we breathe in, we're gonna bring our chest through our hands over to the side. When we get to the side, we're gonna curl that spine towards the back of the chair all the way over to the other side. And we're at the side now, and we're bringing the chest through the hands. And just keep going. So this is my exhalation. So nice and slow. And this is when I breathe in I, my inhalation. 
And then my exhalation as we go around, bring that chin in towards your chest. And this time we're gonna lift up, come all the way around. Exhale, spine to the back of the chair. Bring yourself around. And bring yourself to seat, sorry. Alexa. Are you trying to shock the radio? Alexa, stop. I'm going to go the other way now, sorry, Alexa just decided to join in. I have to whisper Alexa in case she, she starts speaking to me. So breathing, come forward. All the way over to the opposite side. Exhale. Body to the back of the chair. Breathing in. Coming forward. Breathing out. Curling that spine, chin in towards the chest. Breathing in, coming forward. Breathing out, roll that spine back. And breathe in and come forward. And then come to a seat. Oh, my spine feels so much better. We're gonna work top to toe, okay? So the toe part, we'll probably do more of that when we're standing up, but we'll see. Um, but we're gonna work definitely from the neck and the head downwards. So the first thing we're gonna do, you're gonna like this, right? Not a lot. No, you are gonna like that. We're gonna do the lion breath. So spread your hands like great big lion paws. And you're gonna breathe in and lean forward. And as you breathe out, you're gonna lift your hands up, poke your tongue out as far as you can and And then come back to seat. How's that? See, the thing being is, I wouldn't normally teach this in an adult class because everybody would laugh. But now, when you're at home, no one's going to see you. It doesn't matter. The lion breath is really good for invigorating the um, and bringing fresh blood to the throat. So if you have a cough or a cold or a sore throat, the lion breath is brilliant for that. And it's, it's just a really nice little breath to do when no one's looking. We're going to do two more. Are you ready? So you breathe in here. And as you breathe out, you lift up your paws, you come forward and you You go up out that tummy out as far as you can and then come back to seat. Now, who remembers Clarence the Cross-Eyed Lion? I do. So when we do it this time, we're gonna try and cross our eyes and so look at the tip of our nose. Are you ready? Breathe in, breathe out. So you would never do that in a normal class, would you? But in this class, it's good. It's good. So we've opened up the throat. So now we're going to open up on the neck. Arms down by your side. Shrug your shoulders up to your ears. Right ear, right shoulder. Left ear, really point the fingers down towards the floor. So if you're reaching for the floor, keep your head over to the right. Drop the right arm down. And feel a lovely stretch in the side of your neck. Keep going with that. Sit up nice and tall, keep reaching down with the left fingers. And then if you want to, you can bring the right hand up to take hold of the left ear. And we're not pulling the head. We're definitely not pulling the head. We're just applying a little bit of making that arm heavy and drawing the head over to the right. I never realize, um, or I never think that I have a stiff neck until I do this and then I think, oh yeah, I have got a little bit of a stiff neck. And then lift that arm off and just allow the head to float back to centre. Now in my mind, this side of my neck is now longer than that side. It probably isn't, but in my mind it is, so I'm going to do the other side. So shrug your shoulders up to your ears, left ear, left shoulder. Reach down with the right hand, Re make the left hand heavy and keep your left ear pointing towards your left shoulder. Keep reaching down with the, with the right hand. Feeling the side of the neck stretch. And then lift up this arm and see if you wanna take hold of the right ear. Keep reaching down with the right fingers and just make the left hand heavy. Breathing in and out. 
reaching down with your fingers. Breathe, 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 breathe. Oh, lovely. What a lovely stretch. And then take your hand off and allow your head to float back to center. A little roll with those shoulders back and put them in your back pocket. Beautiful, good job, well done. Is that tailbone still going down towards the chair or mum are you sticking your bum out? My mum always sticks her bum out. So I'm gonna keep reminding you to put your tailbone down to the chair, even if you do it all the time, but just remember I'm talking to my mum who's doing this. Okay, so roll your chin in towards your chest. Place your hands on the back of your head. Elbows pointing down towards the floor and just roll the chin in. The elbows are nice and heavy. Breathing out, shoulders away from the ears, keep rolling them in. We're not pulling on the head at all. There's no pulling involved whatsoever. We are just making those elbows nice and heavy as we draw the chin in towards the chest. Beautiful, good job. Now take your hands from your head with your chin still in towards your chest and rest them on your, head, on your thighs. And then roll your head up to a neutral position. A neutral position is if you have a shelf, your, your chin would be sitting on it and your nose would be in line with your sternum, your chest bone. Nice and tall. So now we're going to stretch the front of the neck. So take one of your hands and place a thing, forefinger and a thumb on your collarbones and just draw the skin down. So you're, you're just holding the, um, the, your chest there. And a nice breath in, and then take your eyes up along the opposite wall, up to where you can look up towards the sky. Just be mindful of not going too far. Keep your hand there, see how the stretch increases. It's quite hard to talk when you're doing this. And then release your hand, using your eyes, bring your head back to centre. Well done, shoulders back pocket, tailbone tucked. Let's roll through those wrists, nice big circles, and the other way. Thumbs, and the other way, open and close a few times. And then just use one hand to push your fingers towards the elbow and then draw them back the other way. So just go between the two. We just want to get the wrist moving. If we move every joint in our body every day, then they're always going to move. If you stop moving any joint in your body because it hurts, it's going to carry on hurting. So then do the other side. I often get asked, well as a yoga teacher, you, you obviously don't ache anywhere. I always ache. I think I always have. But I know it's a lot worse if I don't do the yoga and I don't move. So I, I'm going with moving is a good thing. Sit up nice and tall, shoulders in your back pocket. Giving you a few options now for a side movement. You can hold on to your chair, reach over, Come back as you breathe in and go across. So you can do that. Or you can bring your hands to steeple fingers. So my index fingers are touching. I'm crossing my thumbs over my hands and the other fingers are interlocked. And you can take these up to the sky and you can sway from side to side. So you're going to choose whatever it is that you want to do. Up to you. I'm going to do the holding onto the chair one. So my hand's in line with my hip because I want to do that side of my body. I don't want to twist forward or twist back. I want to do the side. So lifting that right arm up as I exhale and go over. And then breathing back to centre. And then breathe out and going over to the other side. Nice stretch. Inhaling, coming back. Exhale, over you go. Coming back, 
Breathing in. Oh, good job. And let's get going. Nice stretch along the side of the body. If you want to stay there for a few breaths and enjoy an extra stretch, you can. I'm going to stay this side now for a few breaths and enjoy it while I can. And then come back to centre. Now we don't generally stretch sideways. We don't go to the cupboard and think, I'm going to turn sideways on, I'm going to reach all the way over my head to grab a tin of beans. We don't do that, okay, we just stretch forward. So this part of the body can get quite congested. And the more open this side of the body, the less pain you're having in your lower back. So it's always worth doing a little side bend. And you have to remember that this movement, whatever one you choose to do, so this movement here helps burn fat from around the waist. See, I knew you'd like it. I knew you would. And then come back to centre, shoulders in your back pocket. Always put your shoulders in your back pocket. Enjoy a little roll round of those shoulders because we spend a lot of time on our phones, on computers, on sewing machines if you're my mum, uh, gardening if you're me. So you don't tend to open up that, that part of the body. So it's always worth um, taking the shoulders back whenever you remember. I'm going to turn the chair sideways now because you'll see more on this movement. You're going to lose my head for a minute, but it will be the first time I've lost my head. So as you can see, I'm not using the back of that chair and I'm sitting nice and upright. We're going to use um, uh, Matarasana, the cat now. So the first option will be with your hands on your knees. So you breathe in and bring your chest forward. Look up towards the sky or breathe out and curl up. So you can do this, okay? You can start doing this, and then if you want to increase it, hold on to the back of the chair, breathing. Can you see how much more lift I get? My shoulder blades are coming together. And as I exhale, I can really pull here. I'm going a nice big stretch. So just in time with your own breath, breathing in and breathing out. See, if I showed you this from the front, you wouldn't get to see the full movement. So just because I changed the chair direction doesn't mean to say you can, as long as you can see me, it doesn't matter. Last one really using the chair to get a much bigger stretch and then come to your neutral position. I'm going to stick my hair up because it makes it easier for you to see. It was just a little bit wet because I literally just got out of the shower. So we're going to do some more opening up on the chest now. So I'm sitting nice and tall and then I'm going to bring my arms to goalpost arms. And then I'm going to squeeze the elbows back, lift up the chest to the sky and breathe. And breathe and breathe and breathe. If lifting the chest up to the sky is too much for you, you can just stay in this neutral position and squeeze the elbows back. But don't just sit here like that, that does nothing. You want to squeeze those arms back and lift up. Breathing, breathing, breathing. Oh. Bring your hands back to your knees, and then what you're gonna do? You're gonna roll those shoulders back and put them in the back pocket. Nice, excellent. I do quite a lot on the chair yoga with shoulders because we carry so much tension there, and the tension in our shoulders can then build up into our neck and head and all sorts of problems. So we're gonna open those shoulders first because it's a good thing to do. So we're sitting up nice and tall. My feet are planted, my knees and my feet are still a hand's distance apart. Then I'm going to take my left hand behind me and take hold of the right side of the chair. I'm not slumping back like this. I'm actually still active and leaning forward and taking that shoulder blade back. Then I'm going to bring the right hand to the left hip. 
and then I'm going to lean forward slightly so that I can feel a real stretch in the shoulders and a real twist. Just check that your knees are still level and turn your head, chin still on the shelf, to look over your left shoulder. Breathe, 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 breathe. Keep breathing, keep breathing, keep breathing. Excellent, good job. Nice big stretch and then bring yourself back to centre. Oh, a little roll of those shoulders back. That was good, wasn't it? Did you like it? Good, I'm pleased you like it because we have to do the other side. So bring the right hand down and take hold of the left side of the chair. And then bring the left hand to the right hip and then start to turn around to look over your shoulder. Breathe, 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 breathe. Keep breathing, keep breathing, keep breathing, keep breathing, keep turning that shoulder down, chin is on the shelf, looking over the shoulder, seeing what you can see, that slight lean forward. If you sit back, you'll find you get nothing out of this. So always lean forward and look over the shoulder. Beautiful, good job. And then bring yourself back to centre. How's that? Shoulders must feel loosey goosey now. We're going to do a, a really simple forward bend. Um, if you don't like taking your head below your knees, just come forward slightly, okay? But if you don't mind, then you can come all the way. So you're going to lift the arms up over the head, reach up, and then fold all the way down. Rest your tummy on your thighs. Hands are alongside your um, feet. I'm going to bring the top of my head to the floor. And while I'm here, I'm going to take my tailbone down towards the chair. This is a beautiful lower back stretch. All along this part of your back is having a nice big stretch. Even if you don't take your head to the floor and you stay here, still take that tailbone down towards the chair and you will get a lower back stretch. Oh, I just realised I've got cold toes. Really cold toes. Does it mean you've got a warm heart? My hands are hot though. Cold toes, warm heart, who knows? But I have got cold toes. And keep taking that tailbone down, enjoying the stretch. And then use your hands to push yourself back up to a seat. Oh, nice shoulders in your back pocket. Very nice. I'm turning back around now. You don't have to do that for a It's just so you can see what's going on. If I was clever, I'd have clever editing that I could just move between the chairs, but I'm not that clever. Let's just cross the right thigh over the left. If you can wrap the right foot behind the left calf, then do so. But if it's too much for you, then don't, because then you'll get that nice stretch in the hip. We're back to our Gold Coast arms. So the right leg has gone over, so the right arm's going over. Now you can rest your hands on your shoulders. You can bring the backs of your hands together, or you can twist and bring your palms together. You choose. Relax the shoulders away from the ears and lift up on the elbows. Now this is called eagle. It's a really good twist. It's a really, you would normally do this standing up, or you can do this standing up. But I actually think that the, um, the stretch you get on the chair is so much better than if you're standing up. Because if you're trying to stand up on one leg and wrap everything around, you're more concentrating on your balance than you are on actually stretching out part of the body. So there's always a benefit to doing chair yoga. And sometimes that benefit is, is the fact that you can stretch more because you're not concentrating on standing on one leg on your yoga mat. Is always good. And then release your arms, release your legs. Come to a neutral position. Take a moment, take a breath. Breathe. Oh, that was nice. Guess what? We're gonna do the other side now. So if, oh, I don't even know if I can do this. If you can hook your foot, um, so left leg's gone over and I'm trying to hook 
my left foot behind my right calf is not quite as good as the other one, but we're getting there. Oh yeah, it's kind of there. Arms lift up. So left leg's gone over, left arm goes over. Remember, hold on to the shoulders. Or bring the backs of the hands together. Or bring the palms of the hands together. Whatever you prefer, relax the shoulders down from the ears. It's really important that you do that. Already you're going to get a stretch across the back of the um, shoulders. And then lift up on the elbows. Keep those shoulders down. Keep your tailbone going down towards the chair. Feel the stretch on the outside of your um, thigh and lift up on the elbows. And don't forget to breathe. It'd be good for me what the time was really, wasn't it? I always run out of time. Always, always always. Keep lifting, keep the shoulders going down. Enjoy this beautiful eagle balance. Oh, and then arm wind the arms, arm wind the legs. And come to your neutral position. Oh good, we're doing well for time. Time is on our side. It's good, isn't it? Always good. Now step your feet off your mat and wide. So your knees are pointing out at a 45 degree angle and your feet are pointing out at a 45 degree angle. We're not doing any Moulin Rouge dancing, ladies and gentlemen. We are just trying to open up on the inner thighs. So bring your hands onto your inner thighs and lean forward. And you're pushing your thighs into your hands and your hands in, uh, into your thighs to create an opening in the hips. And because you lean forward, you're open up on the lower back. And now we're gonna do a few shoulder dips. So breathe in, and as you breathe out, dip the right shoulder down towards the left knee. Breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Keep pushing, especially into the right thigh. Inhale back to center. Exhale over you go. Breathe in, breathe out, drop the shoulder down, come forward, push into that left thigh, inhale up to centre. Can you feel your inner thighs opening? It certainly is. We'll be doing the splits by the end of this. And let's go the other way. So drop that right shoulder down, really push into the right thigh. You can look over your left shoulder to encourage more of a twist. You do really need to lean forward on this one to get the full benefit. Inhale, back to centre, off you go. Other side, drop the left shoulder down, push into the left thigh, look up over the right shoulder, really feel an opening in the lower back on the inner thigh, come back to centre. What's my favourite number? Three, let's go. Over we go. I'm giving you so many hints and tips about what my favourite things are. I like the number three. I like white flowers. You know that already. Come back to centre. And I like dark chocolate. Let's go that way. Oh, I like cocktails as well. And drop the shoulder down. Oh, and come back to centre. And then heel toe your feet together and put them back on your block. Well done, well done, well done. Excellent work. Now there's a few things that I always put into this chair yoga class because I think it's important to do it. So tuck your tailbone down and um, sit up on, excuse me, got hiccups on your chair. Um, and that's because it, it, I know it's a place that I always have tightness that when I speak to other people and they feed back to me, it's somewhere where they always have tightness. Shoulders is one of them, and the other one is hips, or I should I say head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Now cross your right ankle onto your left um, thigh. Now I know that my mum struggles with this, so mum, put a cushion underneath it, okay? And then you're gonna take your fingers, you got them, and you're gonna thread your fingers through your toes. Don't eek at me and go, oh my God, that's so disgusting. I've got to touch my own feet. Thread them through, right? Try and get all of your fingers through. Can you see that? The reason we're doing this is because we spend so much time in socks, shoes, slippers, especially now that it's winter. Our feet get constricted. 
The bones in our feet are very malleable and they get very, very constricted and we don't open our feet. So if you're getting pain in your big toe joint or your, your, it's hard for you to walk because your ankles and feet are sore, open your toes. And then we're going to start to open the ankle. And I'm not just circling the ankle, I'm actually giving it a little pull. I'm actually creating a little bit of um, stretch, in, especially in the front of the ankle and round to the side, okay? So we're just circling. And then we're gonna circle back the other way. Gorgeous. And I'm gonna warm up my feet. Now here, I have the opportunity that I can move those toe joints back and forth more than they would generally move because um, you're pushing and pulling them and you can really open them. Feet are really important, you know. And especially if my family have a history of bunions. So it's really important to keep those feet lovely and open. And then take your fingers out and put that right foot on the floor. Now just have a look at the right foot compared to the left. I don't know if, I can, if you can see, but my right toes is so much more open than my left. Because I've opened them up. So while you're sitting there doing telly, get your socks off, get your fingers involved. We're going to do the other side. I don't know what I've walked on. <laughs> right, so put your fingers through your toes. Get them through. Hold on to that joint. Are you through? And then start to really rotate through that ankle. Feel that ankle move. Oh. That's a nice click. Yeah, I've got a very clicky ankle. Too much netball and twisting of the ankle. It's a common netball, basketball, well, I suppose any sport. And then start to pull and push on your toes. Really open up on your feet. Take your fingers out. See, they must already feel better. I mean, obviously, if you've got someone who, who, who lives with you who, who's really, who likes massaging feet, get them to stick their fingers through your toes. <laughs> Just a suggestion. Now, back onto our hips. We were kind of opening our hips without focusing on it because we were opening up our feet and the angle. But we're going to do that again now. Because I know you love it. Don't forget you can put that cushion there. So we're sitting up nice and tall. Now, some of you will find this relatively, oh, I don't want to use the word uncomfortable, but stretchy, okay? You'll find this a little bit stretchy, but that's fine. That's all good. If that's enough for you, that's enough for you. Or you can take your right forearm, put it on the inside of the calf and the thigh, try not to push on the knee joint, and just lean forward. See, for some of you, you go, oh, that's quite a lot, Laura. I'm just going to stay there. There could be some of us who spend our life sitting on the floor with our legs crossed or doing the splits who have incredibly open hips. So you may want to go a little bit further. So you can put your right elbow on your right knee, your left elbow on your left knee, and bring your hands to Namaste. You can see that I'm quite angled. They're not exactly straight but I'm gonna lift up my chest. So I'm not gonna curl my head down towards my fingers. I'm gonna bring my breastbone, my sternum towards my fingers as I come forward. Now I am, I do sit cross-legged, um, but I can't do the splits. I never, even as a child, couldn't do the splits. Um, so um, my hips aren't, re aren't loosey-goosey. They're a little bit tighty-righty. And we're just gonna lean forward. You can do this anytime, okay? So if you're getting sacroiliac pain, this is a good one to do because this helps release the piriformis. And the piriformis can really muck up your sacroiliac joint. So um, just keep bringing yourself forward. Time will be a great helper on this, okay? And just lean forward. Oh Lord, are we getting there? Am I less of an angle? I feel like I am. If I lift up my left buttock off the chair, then I'm definitely less of an angle, but I think that's called cheating. 
and then bring yourself back up. Wowza, wowza, wowza. Wall that leg around. Hey, hey, hey. Guess what we're gonna do next? Oh yeah, you're right, the other side. Come on then, let's do it. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. So remember, you choose what's right for you. This is your yoga class, your time, so you're gonna choose the right thing for you to do. It's not what I'm telling you to do, it's the right thing for you to do. I should have bought a clock here so I could just glance at it rather than have to keep look at my watch. But um, yeah, we're all right, we're doing well. And we're just gonna then start to lean forward, see how you feel about it. One hip could be very different to the other, which is fine because one side of your body is always different to the other side. So I'm just over halfway through, A, this hip stretch, and B, my isolation after coming back from holiday. Because we went to Turkey and there was an air bridge, and halfway through our holiday, there was no air bridge. So we enjoyed the rest of our holiday and I've just come back and we've got two weeks in the house. It's all good, my lovely sister's walking the dogs for me. Um, the food delivery's coming in, so we're doing all right. I've got so many jobs to do, crochet. Am I taking your mind off it? Gardening, tidying out cupboards. Okay, do we want to go a little bit further? Let's see if we want to go a little bit further. Remember, we're not bringing our head down, we're bringing our chest forward and that really increases the stretch in the hips. Keep breathing, keep breathing, keep breathing, keep breathing. Oh, Lordy Lord. It's doing good, isn't it? Oh my word. But Nina's chair's holding up, Mum. You can tell Dad. Let's keep coming forward. Oh, now you see my left hip isn't as happy as my right hip and my right hip's not happy, so what can you do? Oh, and then bring yourself back up. <sighs> Roll those shoulders back and put them in your back pocket. That is hardcore. Well done you. We're gonna do a little bit more breathing now. I know we did the lion breath at the beginning, but this is the breath that you can do um, in company. <laughs> Whereas the lion breath, I think you should keep that to when you're on your own. So this is, um, this is just a really easy focused breath. It gets the shoulders moving and it has a very calming effect. So we bring our hands to Namaste and then we breathe in, lift our arms up over our head. Look up towards the hands and exhale, bring your hands back down to your chest. So do it in time with your own breath, not in time with me, okay? So this is your inhalation. All the way up, look at your hands. Keep looking at your thumbs as you bring yourself back. Thumbs to heart. One more, breathing in, lifting all the way up. Nice big circle, exhale. Bring your hands back, thumbs to heart. Beautiful, good job. Um, and now we're gonna go the other way. So inhale, push your hands forward, exhale. A nice big circle, exhale, exhale, exhale. Hands come, thumbs back to heart. Breathe in, push those hands away, breathe out. Take the hands up, nice big circle. That's all your exhalation. Now last one, inhale, push your hands away from you. Exhale, hands come up all the way around and finish with your hands back, thumbs to heart. And then just rest your hands on your knees. Do you feel a bit calmer and a little bit more balanced? Use it any time that you're feeling anxious. I mean, we're in difficult times. Anxiety and depression are on the up increase. And I came to yoga because I had depression. So I know that how much it helps me. So remember, I save all these videos on YouTube, Facebook. Um, so if you have a friend who's struggling, send them the link to uh, one of the chair videos. You feel better after doing it. Rest the hands down. We're gonna come to stand up now. So you, my head will disappear, because I am a giant. So we don't use our hands to push up from the chair. 
Mum, you still have to do your stand up and sit downs today. Mum does, uh, well, I think she's up to about 26 now, of this movement where you stand up and then you sit down. It's really good, especially as you, it, you, you become older, to keep the strength in your legs. Because if um, the social services come around to assess you, that's one of the tests they do. If you fail that, they consider you frail. So just have that in mind. Do you want to be frail or do you want to be strong? I think we always want to be strong. So bring yourself up to standing. I hope you can still sit. And come to face your chair. And then your feet are hip distance apart, your knees are hip distance apart. I'm going to crouch down. See, if I was five foot two, it would be sorted. I'm like, I'm not, I'm 5 foot 11, so I'm just going to have to crouch down. It's good for my thighs. Bring your hands to the chair. Feet are level, hands are level, and my back is flat. And I'm going to breathe in here. And as I breathe out, I'm going to try and tap my nose on the back of the chair. Can you feel your hamstring stretching the backs of your legs? And then as I exhale, I'm going to try to bring my head down towards the chair. How are those hamstrings feeling? Breathe in, push up, breathe out, nose to the back of the chair. Nice and simple. Exhale, head to the chair. Feel those hamstrings, nice stretch. And then breathe in, come up, breathe out, nose to the back of the chair. And then exhale, head to the chair. Beautiful, come back to a neutral position. A neutral, neutral position. I hope you're going to all be able to see me. <coughs> I might have to change the angle if I do it again in here. So now we're going to step back. So we're in downward face dog. Oh yeah, you can see me. Excellent. So can you see how my head comes down towards the floor? And I can feel a real opening in my underarms and a real stretch in my hamstrings. I take my tailbone up towards the sky. If this is too much for your hamstrings, just bend one leg and then the other and just step in place. So we're trying to get our bottom higher than our head. So a slight inversion and some nice stretch in your underarms. And then we're going to come forward because you can do a little bit of strength now. We're going to come forward and into that press-up position. Oh my God, did you know you could do press-ups on the chair? You can even do it on the wall. If it's too much for you on the chair, too much weight going through your arms, just do it on the wall. Hands on the wall, go back into down dog and then come forward into a press-up position against the wall. And then exhale back into down dog. Oh, nice stretch. Do you know what? Yoga without downward face dog would be a really sad place. And then bring us up all the way forward and into that press up position. Take your heels away from you so you can feel a nice stretch going through your calf muscles. And then exhale into downward face dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good stretch. Oh. The thing is, downward face dog on the floor, there's a lot of weight going through your shoulders. And a lot of, uh, especially ladies, find it quite difficult. But this is just lovely. Last time coming in, you may not love it as much as me, but it into your plank position. Oh. Strong. That's what we need to be, nice and strong. We're strong. And then take yourself back into downward face dog, just briefly. And then you're going to step your right foot forward, turn your left foot at a 45 degree angle, and then you're going to lift up into warrior two. Can you see that? I've got my head in it now. Relax your shoulders down. Relax, relax. Focus is on the middle finger of the front hand. Arms are steady. The right knee is pointing towards the right little toe. And you can feel your inner hips opening. Keep breathing. And then the right hand comes down to the chair. 
the left hand comes in the small of the back and we open up the shoulder to the side taking the right knee over towards the right little toe and we're open we're open we're open you're there can you feel that opening if you want to you can take your hand over your head but that's a much bigger stretch so see how you feel and then the left hand comes down guess where we're going back into downward face dog here we go oh lovely left foot comes forward right foot's at a 45 degree angle and then we open out into warrior two i'm just checking that my arms are level i don't want any of you telling your left knee going towards the left little toe focus on the middle finger of the left hand and we're breathing breathe 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 relax the shoulders away from your ears sink your hips down and then the left hand comes to the chair right hand in the small of the back and we're opening up the right shoulder to the sky i've got cramp in my left buttock but hey you can't have everything you like open up open up open up breathe 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 keep breathing keep breathing keep breathing oh lovely and then the right hand comes down we step back into downward face dog oh and then we tiptoe our feet to do the chair and roll up into standing now i've lost my head i've lost my head i'm so sorry Okay, I'm turning my chair around. You can just walk round to the back of your chair. Now, how well you can hold on to your chair, you can have one finger there, or you can just use it as a little bit of a balance. But we're going to come up on our tiptoes and back down. Up on tiptoes and back down. And up on tiptoes and back down. Then we're going to stand on one leg, up we come, and down. We do three, because I like three. It's a bit annoying that I've lost my head though. Up we go. I need to change the camera angle or just get smaller. What do you reckon? <laughs> Okay, let's see about doing a nice balance now. A nice balance. I'm going to step back. So I'm about, I don't know, a big ruler's length away from my chair. I'm going to step the left leg back so that my feet are stiff. I'm going to bring my right hand to the chair. I'm going to lift my left hand up to the sky. And then I'm going to lift the left leg up behind me. This is called half moon. I've now got cramp in my right buttock. Oh, Lord. Yes, Dawn, I am taking my magnesium. Up we go, up we go, up we go. Beautiful. Well done. And then come down. Set the left leg back. No, right leg back, left leg forward. We're going to do the other side. Are you ready? The left hand comes down. We lift up the right leg behind us. We lift the right arm up to the sky. And we focus and we open and we balance. This works on the biggest muscle in the body, which is your bottom. Oh, keep stretching, keep stretching, keep stretching. Oh, and then come all the way down. Good job, give the legs a little bit of a wobble. I can't believe I've got cramp. Roger Marsden. Hello, he's here. Roger's back. Roger, you've just come in time for relaxation. So find a nice, comfortable seat on your chair. Grab a blanket, eye mask, pillow. Make yourself comfortable. You can now use the back of the chair to rest again if you wish to. If you like doing relaxation on the floor, then do relaxation on the floor. Just find that comfortable spot, because we're now going to do some relaxation. Technically, if you're sitting up, it's meditation. Relaxation's on the floor. 
whatever it is, it's good. So put on your blanket, put on your socks, get your eye mask, find your comfortable spot, wherever that may be. Are you there? Are you ready for relaxation? Get that eye mask on. Roger, I know you only come for relaxation. And find that comfortable space. Keep breathing in and out through your nose. Shimmy your shoulders away from your ears. Scratch your nose. Scratch your arm, wherever you've got itches. Make sure you're completely comfortable, okay? Find that comfortable space. And start to connect with your breath again as you breathe in and out through your nose. Nice and gently, nice and easy. Breathing in and breathing out. As you breathe in, feel the tummy rise. And as you breathe out, the tummy falls. And breathing in, feel the tummy rise. And breathing out, the tummy falls. Breathing in, feel the tummy rise, the ribs expand, the collarbone lift. As you breathe out, the collarbones sink, the ribs go back towards the spine and the tummy is drawn away and away to the earth. In time with your own breath. Feeling your lungs expand front and back and sides as you inhale and as you exhale. Listening to the sound of your breath as you breathe in and as you breathe out. Sound should be like a gentle wave on the ocean as you inhale and as you exhale. And then as you breathe in, number your breath seven. And as you breathe out seven. Breathe in six. Breathe out six. Breathe in five. Breathe out five. Breathe in four. Breathe out four. Continue to count backwards in time with your breath. If you lose count, if you fall asleep, or your mind starts to wander off on other things, as soon as you realise, return to your inhalation and number that seven. Exhale seven. Inhale six. Exhale six. Inhale five. Exhale five. Continue to count backwards in time with your breath. If you should reach the number one, just return to the number seven and continue to count backwards in time with your breath. Focusing on the sound of your breath as you inhale and as you exhale, like a gentle wave on the ocean. Counting backwards from seven to one in time with your breath. If you lose count, if you fall asleep, if your mind starts to wander off on other things, that's perfectly normal. And as soon as you realise, a nice breath in and number that breath seven. Exhale seven. Inhale six, exhale six. Inhale five, exhale five. And continue to count backwards in time with your breath. The aim of this relaxation isn't to reach the number one. The aim of re this relaxation and any relaxation is to bring your mind and your body to a point of complete stillness, if only just for a few seconds.
if you are still counting, allow the number you're on just to gently drift away. And just return to normal breathing in and out through your nose. When you are ready, start to bring some awareness back into your breath. Become aware of the sound of your breath as you breathe in and you breathe out. Become aware of the sounds around you. And as your awareness grows, start to wriggle your fingers and wriggle your toes. A soft turn of the head from side to side. Opening and closing your eyes a few times. If you put an eye mask on now, it's the time to take it off. Stretch your arms nice and wide, a nice big yawn. If you're on your chair or on the floor, give yourself a hug. If you're on the floor, bring your knees in towards you. And just a hug and a rock from side to side. Take the arms nice and wide and go the other way. Beautiful, good job. And bring yourself back to your neutral position. If you're, if you're laying on the floor, bring yourself up to a seat. Namaste. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I'm going to save the video on Facebook and I'm going to post it to YouTube. So if you know of anybody who may benefit from this, uh, wonderful. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, that would be amazing. Um, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And um, I post videos on there of um, yoga and HIIT and other things that I do. Um, so if you'd like to um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, that will be amazing. Um, but I will post this and I will say this and I hope to see you all next week. If, you, if there's any feedback you'd like to give me um, about things that you want to do more or things that you want to um, see more, um, please let me know. Um, I'm just going to say thank you to everybody who's joined me. So thank you to Roger Marsden. Yay, Roger. Dawn Sullivan, Sangeeta, um, Patricia Morley, uh, Jane. Hello, Jane Collins. Hello, Joe. Oh, hi, Val. Oh, hi, Sue, on your computer, uh, on your phone. Oh, my God, I hope it worked okay on your phone. Um, Pat, Mum, and Claire, and Linda. So thank you very much to all of you who joined. Um, any hearts, feedback, everything else. It all works to get me up the um, news feed. Oh, I was going to show you a picture of my grandma. I don't know if I can, actually. i move. Oh, she's right up there. Mm, that's my grandma and my grandpa. And I did yoga on their chair today. Yay. Good job. Okay, take care. And I hopefully see you next week. Bye-bye.